Okay, so uh, I will uh, going to start what we have done. Uh, always like I remember that workday, uh, like any integration, not only workday, any integration has a source, target, and so when we are talking about source, Uh, when we are talking about source, source means every case where we are going to put data. We have done with the with the report, and we have done with the one location connector. And now we are going to discuss about the core connector worker. Core connector worker is a primary uh, connector which is there to send information of an employee. It's vastly used for identity services. Uh, like uh, Office 365, uh, Active Directory, uh, or Identity Manager, like Oracle Identity Manager, or various other systems. So whenever we are going to provision an employee, we are going to provide accesses to those systems. This is one way. Another thing is like, if you are going to information about uh, employee and their bank accounts, we can send through the Worker integration too. So these three, four are the basic example of sending data from worker to worker integration. Uh, so, uh, source for, in, in the integration, there is a source, target, and transformation. So source is somewhere we are extracting information, and target where we are putting information. And transformation is when we are converting information. So that's what we have discussed. And in case of uh, now, what we are discussing about the, the source where Workday is a source to provide information to any system, like assuming that HR is always a master of uh, data or employee data. So we are going to provide information from Workday to any target system, like identity management services, your payroll information services, uh, your benefit like the hospital systems uh, where we are providing services, your 408k uh, systems and any other government system. Workday is a primary thing from where we are extracting data and providing them. Uh, there are few systems like, let's say an example of your verification that is also done from the Workday as a source system. It provides information to the uh, any of the government sites and get uh, information that you are authorized, and then it works uh, into uh, like it it allow you or it gives you a flag of green like this is done, so uh, we are able to send the information. So uh, in case of when when workday is a source, we have a multiple ways to extract information. One is a report. If we discuss in the last sessions, uh, and then other is a core connectors. Core connectors is what a built-in functionality, and we have done in the last session we have done about the core connector uh, location, and uh, we have worked on the core connector worker with the basics. So we are going to start with the core connector worker. All core connectors have three portions: uh, services, field attributes, and delivery steps. So we are going to discuss uh, core connector worker. I'm going to create that core connector worker from start. This create integration system will be always same for any core connector development. You just need to use a relative template. So we have to choose worker as a template. And as mentioned, our core connector worker. So this is a connector we are going to use. And this is the services we are talking about. Services uh, allows you to extract or to only fetch a specific information. In case you need all the data of employee, you can click on enable all services. But for the starting purpose, we just start from one service and then we will add up everything one by one. We will going to start with uh, employee photo, profile photo, this personal data and status data. 
in core connector worker we have to create a custom integration services because this is mandatory for eligibility criteria so core connector worker always try to get the basic information or the condition on which the data should be picked it will not pick everything we have to create a, a criteria for this let's do it in in a second so once you've done it, it will always ask you this message because there are few integration attributes which we need to configure first, which are mandatory and which the, the integration will not run without that. In actions and configuration integration attributes, when you click on this, these are the parts where you have to mention everything. You have to fix and find like the every important aspects. Let's make it bigger with the screen and see what is mandatory. In options, you will always find like which is mandatory information, which is required for launch. In case of worker, the version is always mandatory. And the reason of uh, this version to be mandatory is there are quite a lot connectors which was developed in past and it was updated in recently with all updates. So we have to choose like which is uh, which version we are going to use. Obviously, we always go with the latest version, but as due to the previous support, they are providing all these things from 15 to 34. 34 is the latest version. Okay, then are we going to include inactive workers? Inactive workers means all termination, which was in past. In case of you need to uh, update the system with all the termination daily or uh, every day or then, uh, or, or during the full file, then it's, it's, it should be uh, important to put it as a mandatory. But for now, or for any uh, normal delta changes, this, uh, this system or this parameter does not need to be there. It's only needed when it's required to update uh, the whole uh, system with the full file and the employee's termination, we, we also need it. But of course, when we are clicking it, it has a lot of variation. Uh, as an employee or as a worker, if we convert a worker from work employee to contingent worker, there are two record existing workday. So if we are making this parameter as mandatory, that means, uh, oh, sorry, if we, we select it as a, uh, to, to send the inactive employees to, it means that it will also send two records for an employee which are converted. So it does not make sense for the end party to understand whole things. So we do not normally use this parameter until unless it's required. Then name types, you are, there are multiple name types in Workday, legal name, offered name, and lot of other tags. So we are selecting that which type of tags we are going to use. Are we going to use legal name and preferred name, or we are going to use all the names? Obviously, it depends on the, the system which we are integrated. If it is a legal system, we always prefer legal name, but if it is, uh, uh, some other thing where we need a, uh, with nicknames and other preferred names or former names, we, we are going to use that. We can select all the things in the same parameters and it will come with the whole tag. The all names will come in the same tag. ISO code we have discussed in the last the country ISO is a three digits uh, or four di uh, two digits characters. Normally it is selected with two digits, but we can change it to three. Address types. So we are configuring uh, by default. Uh, it brings with the worker uh, ho uh, work address. But if we are really looking for the home address, uh, we need to enable it with the home. Uh, let's say any uh, some of the systems may need their home address, and some just need a, a work address. If we are talking about uh, identity services or any provision services to ex provide accesses to an employee. 
we need their home address, uh, work address. But if we are talking about uh, their some banking information and all these things, then we may need our home address. Similarly, address usage is, uh, is the same, like the type of address we are going to use, what type of addresses are we going to include the private address. By default, private address is not sent from Workday so to any system until unless we are uh, ex giving the explicitly information, yes, we need the private address. Otherwise, it's just go with the public address. There is a primary and non-primary address. So we are configuring that either we, we also need non-primary address too, like are we looking for, if there is a work address, there might be a multiple addresses. Are we are going to send all the addresses? So in, in few cases, uh, when we are developing in the start, it always like that uh, we miss the, uh, these configurations properly. And that means when we are sending information, we do not know the type of addresses we are sending. And then we are finding out like why the information is not sent. Or in the, if you are getting an operational job and you are uh, providing support to the uh, integrations, there might be a thing like uh, they are asking for some address and it's not appearing in, in the integration. And then you need to find out these attributes and the parameters. As we discussed with the addresses, it's the same with the phone queue, the same thing. And it, it's the same with email too. So in case of email, it's, it's the same like work, private and primary email, uh, like home uh, address, phone number and email deal with the same thing. These uh, include prior values task. Include prior values always allow us to uh, pick the previous value of the integration, like what was the previous uh, information in that tag. Like for example, if your previous salary is uh, 50,000 and it's changed to the 60, then it will not only bring the 60,000 information, it will bring the previous value to like with the 50K. This is one of the really, really great feature. So in some of the integrations, some of the uh, target system, they require the previous information to, to verify that the information is correct uh, or, or to, do, to do the cross check. So they are using the prior values for every field. It's not on the salary, it's for every field. Then job classification group for, for uh, job classification group for the job classification. Uh, organization type, like uh, you're talking about cost center, supervisory organization, company, what type of information you are going to pick, identity uh, type, either we are looking for only uh, social security number or we are talking about the passport and all these stuff. For anything, when you click on the plus, it's a drop down. So it will give up with every information you have. If we are talking about related dependent information, this tag is to enable them, like I, uh, what information we are going to bring for the related information. Are we, uh, the next is required field validation. And the required field validation is uh, normally for the validation rule. It's like we are talking about the rule within the connector, like when it's extracting data, it's validated before the information. Then the, this like include terminated and transferred worker from the restricted result by organization. So if we are talking about uh, some organization and they are not, uh, they are restricted, even then if we are clicking on this, it will bring that information. Normally it will not. Include address field descriptive attributes, include uh, suppressed worker audit messages, press audit reports. These are the, the things where we are talking about like if we just need a basic information or we need a more details. In general, 
this information does not be used. Multiple supervisors uh, will, in case of, if you are having more than one job or uh, like you're, uh, you, you are expat and then uh, you are posted in some other country, then you have two uh, supervisors. Or in case of matrix organization, you have more than one or, uh, manager. So this tax will allow you to bring more than one supervisor. In general, it always brings a primary supervisor. Use transaction log with the full file. Uh, transaction log is like uh, every information when you are running with the full file, even then it will bring the tra uh, transaction log. Otherwise, it's not bringing the transaction log for the for the normal uh, when we, we are running the full file. Transaction log is the whole detail of that person. Group additional information field by service. Uh, are we talking about like the, the field override with the services? Are we going to, uh, uh, to have some more group uh, in the additional fields? <clears throat> we, we are going to discuss about the, the, the field override or additional field and we, we, we are going to touch it again. Similarly, as we talked about supervisor, are we going to pick all the, the multiple positions like international assignment or the other jobs? which is not primary. Job types, either we are just talking about the primary fields or we are talking about primary position, international assignment, and other, and other jobs. So always include worker with the manager change in output. Like whenever the manager is changed, we, we want that worker to be uh, in, the, in this field or not. Uh, okay, the, the thing is like XML or, or the SOAP has a limit. So this will automatically allow it to break the file into sub files like sub records. Whenever it's a 1000 workers, it will break that file and it will create a, generate a new file. It depends on what type of integration you are making and how much data you are expecting. So that's why it's, it's allow you to generate the multiple output files. And this is a uh, quite latest uh, feature, which is just available in uh, release 34, like just uh, available in the last uh, release in somewhere in Feb, this uh, feature came. Okay. And then the second about field attributes. We discussed about the configuration attributes and now we are talking about field attributes the field we are going to choose. And remember that we have choose three services only. So we have a photo, we have a data section, and we have a status data. So we can include things. Uh, in photo, let's say we need all fields in output file. In worker section, we just say that name data. Uh, just remember that in the attribute sections, we say that we need a legal name only. So we are going to bring name type, first name, middle name, and last name. There are a lot of other things, but I'm not going to, to click that information. I need a gender, I need a date of birth, and city of birth, and nationality, and that's it for now. And then, the status, which is more towards your position section or the active or the hiring information about that. So staffing event, uh, either you are hired, you are like the change of organization or what type of hiring event done, a staffing event done on that worker. That's the code it will bring. Staffing event date, employment status, either he's currently employed or not, active and hired date and probably termination date, because all the integration needs higher and termination dates. Termination date is always when we are going to revoke the excesses, right? So for now, it's, we click it here, and we select multiple fields in, from the 
configure integration attributes. If I'm going to find my integration again, uh, I need to use integration system. It's like a, uh, you, you just say that it's an indexing and it will always search from integration, which is much more faster to search if I just use AS. Field overrides. And I told you that there is always a one field override criteria we need to make. So that it will bring only that person. But for now, I just make it like to pick everything, any is true. That means anyone is in the company should bring. I can limit it to one company. I can limit it to one supervisory organization. I, will, I can able to limit it to any location. So even to one person even. So it depends on the requirement uh, where you are integrating, how many companies you have in the, in the same system. And uh, on, if you have a multiple location and just want to send it to one location. Uh, <clears throat> the need of this is more, more relevant because uh, generally company has, uh, are operating in more than one countries. They are having a sub offices in the different locations. And one location is integrated one, with one system and another is located, uh, integrated with another. So this is the portion where we are going to limit it to that uh, employees, like only that specific worker will be extracted. So our integration is like with the basic information, our integration is done. Let's go to the action and integration and launch schedule. It will allow us to launch the integration for that person, for, for that, uh, for the oil company. We have discussed about last successful as of entry moment and as of effective date and as of entry date and effective date in the last integration. Okay, then this, uh, obviously we have to enter some date parameter here, but this will be not used. If we are going to send full file, this parameter in the last is going to use full file and it's extract the worker, whether it's changed or not. Okay, the thing is like, if you do not have it, it will, it is a mandatory, but when you are picking the full file, it will, uh, you need to use this one. And it's running now. I just read like the effective date and entry date and begin date. Even if I do not have it, it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't have any issue. It's quite a lot data. Let me cancel it and run it for, for one person. So uh, let's just and uh, in case of we, we are going to work on worker, uh, we can limit it to the one worker or we can limit it, it to the one organization, the whole organization. Uh, let's take and an supervise the organization of human resource or any de department. We do not want to, to send the data for the whole company, but we want to send it for, uh, for one department uh, to, to run it for the odd purpose or, or any purpose. So in that case, we are going to use the restricted result for an organization. 
this can be a location, this can be a supervisory organization, this can be anything. Company. Right, this is like, a, 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 or by default, but uh, let's do with the human res resource, which is like the Logan McNeil's department. It's the coming with the supervisory organization. So it can bring all type of organization, supervisory organization, company, call center, location, anything, or hierarchy. But for now, we just do it for the Logan McNeil for the first time, so it will be faster. Okay, so when we run the full file, we have a diagnostic audit, we have an output, but we do not have a one HTML file which is missing, the change audit. Because this is full file and it brings everything. But it will open, let's open the output.xml. So summary is by default. It will always bring this information, the summary. And eligibility criteria. These three are mandatory or it will come for everything. But we have talked about legal name. Uh, this is what we have uh, extracted from the personal information, gender, and birth date. And from the status, we bring the employee active statuses uh, and employee hire date. And from photo, we bring with the image information. We need to, if we are going to, to do it, what we have to do, we have to go back to our system. We have to go with the integration and field attributes. Uh, well, I believe that we do not have the, uh, we have just status, personal data and profile section, right? So in order to pick that information, we have to open some services. So we have to go to the integration services and configure the services, which is the first step. And let's see, in which section we have a manage information. It should be normally with the position, right? I enabled the position section. Now I didn't edit any employee yet, any manager yet. So I click it on okay. I go to actions. I go to the integration server, uh, system again and configure integration attributes, field attributes. And if you see now we have a position section two, the third one. Yes. So yes. in this we have, uh, let's say we need position title, effective date, business title, and look at here, it's a supervisor, right? So I will enable it now. Okay. Done. And just launch it again. Action, integration, and launch. Okay. Let's do it for Logan McNeil again, so that it will be faster. Logan McNeil. And it's a full file. Output dot examine. So in position section, this manager didn't appear. Uh, let's see, we have turned this information, but we do not have a manager yet. I just checked every information about the supervisor, their ID and their name.
Now we have a supervisor information as a tag and their ID and name. Let me go back. Uh, let me try to open the attributes again. So previously we just click on the supervisor. So it means that it will just bring this tag, the main tag. This tag, we are enabling this whole further tag, the main, this one. This does not have a supervisory ID or name. So we have to enable it again. So this information will only, uh, the, the upper tag will only come when there is a change, but this will always come if we are running for the full file too. Now this information become mandatory every time. Let's see, we, do, do we have a manager ID here, manager email? I guess no, not here. So what we need to do, we go close this. We're going to configure the field overrides service. So in order to create field override, we have to add a field override here in the services. So let's create a one field override. When we click here on the create, create, it will allow us to create, open this screen. So we need a create field integration service, override service. It will pre open this form. I'll just write a name of we worker field override and worker as an object. And the name is manager email. This is just a name of the field over like, it's not pick anything, it's just like a field name. Close it. And now go to the action again. Now I have to map the value with this. So integration system, and I need to create configuration integration field override. I don't know why it's not there. Can we stretch it? I guess I didn't push okay on that time. So now this in the in the integration configure integration field override, we have a new tag here, right? And here it's an email address, and I need to override with the value, right? So supervisor email, I think we do not have any calculated field here. So let's create a small calculated field. I guess you people know how to create a field. Everybody knows and we had a class of that. Look up field. Uh, Uh, I think it's not on the supervisor. We are going to create a calculated field to uh, pick up the supervisor name. So 
So we just uh, use one of the manager field already created, like the, the this calculated field. Someone has created that look up current manager. So I'm just just using their field with uh, with the email work to bring the email for this, but it should be one one email. It should not be having a multiple emails. Email primary word. Uh, this calculated field always take one field override. It cannot take more than one data element. Okay, so what I have done is like I tried to use this calculated field, which is someone has created as a CF lookup current manager. And when I looked this uh, calculated field, which I used, I found like it is like it's bringing up for the effective date of today. And this does not work for, for our calculated field. There's something wrong with this field. So what I did, I created my own calculated field with the lookup related value so that it will bring manager's email address from uh, for the object worker. So my name, field name was a CF worker email. My object was worker and type is lookup related field. And lookup field, which I use is a manager level one, which is a immediate manager. And level two is a manager's manager. So in case of, uh, I need any type of levels of, of manager, like the manager, manager's manager, it will come up with the lookup related field here. And then you can just bring up their email address, like the primary email address work. And then you come here and you configure it uh, in the field override, CF manager level one. CF uh, manager email, which we just created as a lookup field. So in case of uh, any, uh, the, the, there are a lot of scenarios when we do not have the direct field available in the course vector worker, we can allow our, our uh, it's not a customization, it's just like uh, adding up one more feature. So we allowed our, our work, they allowed us to create any type of feature. Obviously, we uh, will recommend not more than 20 field overrides. Right? In, in case of uh, Max, we, we just need to have a 20 field overrides, and that's easy. So that it will not uh, reduce the performance of the system. So as this is done, I just try to run it. Actions, integration, launch. Okay. So if you see it here on the end, we have a manager. It's not exactly in the supervisory tag. It is somewhere in the additional information tag with a manager, manager email. Does this make sense? Yes, thanks, Professor. Okay, so this is a really good question, and it's a good uh, information. Like we have to use a lot of extract single instance or lookup related values in, when we are developing uh, core vector worker, because there are mostly information is available, but there are few informations which are not directly related with the employee. So we have to extract that information, like email of manager. This is not directly associated with employee or employee bank account does not associated with the worker integration. So we have to use field overrides. Okay, so, so far we have done with the core connector worker. 
we have done with all the the example output formats we have talked about like uh, we get whenever we we have a hire promotion transformation termination or any update of the worker data then integration generates a, a trigger a changes and it generate a file we discuss about the configuration data sections uh, like we have done with the core connector location and worker and we uh, for the worker we did uh, there is a uh, worker detect changes to the worker data by monitoring a transaction log so the core connector will always uh, detect the changes so if it is a location then location detect the changes to the location data by monitoring a transaction log and if it is a worker it will uh, it will do the same so any core connector will detect the changes There might be, uh, sometimes we need a business process and the transaction type uh, to configure uh, during the, the setup of the integrations. Uh, we will going to do one, one the business process setup for uh, transferring the data in the, uh, in the later section of this uh, section. If the transactions, uh, like if the integration does not subscribe to the specific transaction type, then maybe that uh, changes will not trigger. Like if you are not uh, configuring the transaction log for everything, it will not detect the changes. So there are always three step process to detect the, the changes. One is like, uh, if the, the worker has any change in the field value, uh, it will trigger the changes. If we have determined that the transaction log active for everything, but if we do not and we are selecting for the full file, it will uh, run the full file information. Uh, normally, the transactions, uh, whenever there's a transaction log configured, and if it's uh, configured for higher, it will pick up the whole data of that. Full file versus uh, delta change or differences. Generally, the, uh, the core connector is built to, to pick up the transactional changes. Uh, obviously, it is it works in the full file extract too, but in 95%, we do not uh, send the whole data again and again. We just want to send the changes. Because if you are sending the whole file and whole data changes again and again, it's cost time and efficiency. Uh, the system resources will be used. So it's always best to, to use or to, to see the, the changes only so that the, the system will not be uh, utilized at the back, uh, at the max. Uh, it's not only Workday who is just sending the data, it's always the, the other system which is receiving. They have to, to find out the changes too. But in few cases, the full file is used. Uh, the, the delta or the differences is normally work on the start date and end date and it picks the data between start and end date. The, the end date, if you remember in the last session, we have discussed that uh, uh, the end date is normally picked automatically by the last effective date of the integration run uh, or the last entry date of the integration run. It's the field available in the, uh, when we are configuring the, the configurations, it's available in the system. I will show you again. Eligibility criteria is, uh, is for, uh, for work integration. It's not for all the integrations. In the some uh, uh, connectors, it is not available. But for few, the worker eligibility criteria or the eligibility criteria is available so that it restrict the person. But if you are talking about uh, payroll uh, connectors, uh, this does not exist there. We have discussed about the field override. We have used it. The field override is normally when there is the, the, the direct or the, the information does not exist in the core connector worker uh, or core connectors. We use field overrides to extract the data from the other objects. Uh, the best is used with the minimum uh, calculated fields or the field overrides so that the efficiency will not reduce. 
but if sometimes it uh, the work that does not by, by architecture they, they avoid using the maximum uh, field overrides but in general they do not stop you using the uh, the field overrides So when we are talking about the eligibility criteria, it always uh, picked up when is the eligibility is true. Uh, for example, if uh, if a person we are uh, we are just saying that we need to pick all the terminated workers, so it will only pick the terminated workers if the termination date occurs or the terminated worker comes in that field, then it will pick. Otherwise, it will uh, return a boolean uh, false, and if it returns false, it does not work. So the activities we have performed the create integration system, and in the integration system we use the uh, connector uh, code connector worker. We can uh, configure the integration services. We can configure the integration attributes. We can configure the feed attributes, and we can configure the feed override. We are going to configure integration maps too. We have worked on the launching integration systems. Uh, we see that how to launch and schedule it. Uh, in the last class, we have uh, scheduled one of the integration which went uh, after five minutes of the schedule. Uh, we have discussed about the, the integrations. We have discussed about the, the parameters of the, when we are launching organization run frequencies. Uh, let's uh, give one work here. If we are going to launch it, if you look here on the organization, you can restrict the, the integration to launch it for the specific organization. It will be limited to that organization only. And run frequency, we have discussed in the last last one hours whenever we want to run it the weekly once once in a future and whatever we want right so before going to the next uh, slides i want to see one thing here when the logan mcneil has changed or run it for uh, we are going to run it uh, as a delta change for only the logan mcneil department which is human resource. So we are going to run the integration for this department and see what changes are coming. So if you look at when I try to run it, it's pick up the last run time, like 9.31, we ran it, this integration, right? So I do not know when uh, we have our limits of, or when we have done some changes, so I will start from May so that it will bring some information and I will be going to restrict it by organization. I'm not going to use the full flag, full file flag now. So I just want to change the delta. If you see now, there is not only diagnostic audit, there is a data change audit too, right? So if I click on here on this data change audit, it will bring all the changes. And yellow means change. Whenever there's a yellow, it means change. Green means addition and word means uh, deletion. So this staffing event is added. The green means added. This is yellow means change. 
she was on uh, she was active and now she's on leave and the status has changed and her uh, business title was changed from strategy recruitment to the chief staff okay so let's go and see the output file too So this is the change, and now we have a change information here. And in case of position modified, which we see it from there, the tag will come with the modify. So every option or every tag, like the personal information, does not need to have any tag, the operations, but for position, there's a change of modify add and delete tags, uh, add, modify and remove. These three tags are for, for position and it can be empty if there is no change. So it's none for when there is no change. And if you look at this position, it is modified and his supervisor is modified with the same operation. When there's no change in supervisor, it's empty. So now we have an XML output ready for us and we want to deliver it to someone without making any transformation. Let's assume that transformation will be done by the target system. So what we are going to do, we have this integration system. We have to create a business process with this integration system and worker actions there's a business process we have to create copy or link so we just want to copy it there's nothing we want to change copy existing definition we don't have any existing definition we do not want to link with the existing definition we just need to do none of the above and go with okay And this is the service of like what we are doing. And we need to create a third step for us. See, and we need to do the integration. Services to do document delivery one. So if we are going to uh, deliver something, we need to use the document delivery. If we want to retrieve something, we need document retrieval. If it is an inbound integration, it should use this. But as we are talking about outbound, so we use the document delivery. Once we do OK, it will ask me to configure the information. So when I'm going to configure it, it will ask me where I want to transport the what type of system I'm going to use. Either we are going to use Amazon, AS2, email, FTP, SFTP, anything. The same as we did it for uh, report delivery systems. If we use SFTP, then it's asked us the SFTP address, like which address we are going to use, the authentication method, and the username and password. Let's say, uh, we just put some dummy information in here.
sorry, I am adding R. In. It should not be there. So now the test.com will also work. Username, password, and that's it. Once we are delivering the file, normally some of the companies, SFTP is a actually encrypted transport protocol, but if we are not using SFTP and we are using something else, we, we may use to encrypt the file. Were they allowed to, to encrypt the file with the PGP encryption? We are not going to use it now, but uh, generally, were they allowed to encrypt the file using PGP encryption? So the document delivery is from the integration process. Whatever file delivered by Workday, we are going to use it. So now when this integration will run, this has this business process where it will allow to transfer the file. Any question? Okay. So once we done with this, we can do the long integration. And if you see now, we have also a test transport uh, menu available in the integration. This allows us to test the, the connection with the SFTP test and it's allowed to test either to connect, to listen, to deliver file. Of course, when I'm going to test it, it will fail because the, the IP address or the address does not exist. But if it is, it is a real address, it will be connected with this information and it will run successfully. So it, it is taking that much time, which means that it will fail in a few seconds is trying to, to establish a connection. The real problem or, or sometimes it's a real example when the integration ran successfully but it is not able to deliver the file, then the, the integration uh, message or the error message will be appear like integration ran uh, with error and it will show you the error in your system. Okay, so uh, that it failed. But if it's come with the integration error, then it shows in the top level, like the integration is failed or it's completed with error. Uh, any type of error which occurs, it will appear here in this situation. And when you click on this uh, triggering item at this level, mm -hmm. there is a log. Like, if you see, there is a log information here on your left side. This log contains all the information, but it is more like a, a let me open it. We try to test it, right? This this IP address and see the output like answered us like this is a timeout exception. So it does not able to found out this IP or even if this IP exists, it means that it failed to connect. It does not authorize it. So if we are going to run our integration with this file it will give a throw an error to us. So generally when we are testing the, the transport uh, connections on, on production eligibility, we test use this test transport before running the integration in the live environment. Okay. <clears throat> So this is the integration we have done now. And we want to create 
one more uh, transformation, like we want to transform this information, not in the XML file, but in some other file, like the CSV or just as uh, someone has asked in the previous question. In that case, we need to use create integration system again. We call in workday is DT or document transformation. And when we are going to create a document transformation, we need to use document transformation as a template. This is provided by Workday, and this allows us to add any attachment with this service. So if you see that it's an error about the attachment, attachment of our transformation. We can go here on action. We can go to the integration system and we can find out the configuration integration attachment service. Let's see if we have a worker connector. So something is there already. So I, I'm going to use this if it, it works for us. Okay, perfect. So what we have done right now, we have just used the worker transformation and we have used one of the document transformation and we can attach with one of the file with the integration attachment, which is a generic worker pipe output transformation.xml. And this is obviously created by Workday by default six years ago. Uh, generally, we do not use it. It's like we create by uh, our own transformation whenever we are going to, to send the information in the requirement. Right, so let's try to see this first. And okay, so when we are going to do the transformation, we normally need two things with this. One, which document we are going to transform into tag. And if we go to our integration services again, it, we have to create that tag here first. So how to create a tag? We have to go to the actions of our primary worker system, like the main file, and we have to create into the integration fields, the first one the attributes, and here, it's the output file tag. Click here. And now we are going to create the tag. Sorry, wrong value. Uh, output document tag, this one. It allowed me to create a document tag. It's just a tag so that I can use it for my output file. It's easy to, to uh, for the integration to find it out. And I just do okay with this. And here, I go to the action again. It's a document transformation that I'm going to use. And I need to configure integration attributes and here document transformation input document tag. Here it was the output tag and here it's an input tag. And I need to mention the same tag which I created there and it will pick. Make sense? I go back to my integration worker system and I have created the business process definition already. I will going to go to the actions, business process, edit definition. I want to change this definition so that this 
integration will call the integration system worker. I'm going to change this configuration document because we do not have a delivery at the moment. So I go to, to call the integration and okay. And I go to, to call the configuration integration and worker. Transformation, which I just done it, right? This one and click OK, and static, and it's fine. It's done, done. Now I'm going to launch it for one person, integration, launch, OK. Do it for Logan McNeil. Click full file and run. Now, if you see that the information or the, the screen is slightly changed, it's not the same as we did earlier. There was a refresh button, now it's not. Now it's completed, and if you see, there, are, there is a lot of other files than this. Diagnostic file, output.xml file. This is what we generally created by, uh, this is the work the output, right? And if you see that, there is a file created in text. This is the output which we have created. And this is the output in this format. As a pipeline delimiter. Any question? Okay, so the the transformation or the generic file output we used, that is this one. This is using XML. XML is a any accessibility and XML is a, a generic uh, language which is developed for the new modern integration purposes. And if you see this, this is exactly the transformation done by accessibility. So this is like the language or this is the interpreter. This is the, 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 the interpreter who transform the data from our language to the other language. If any of the integration or if any of the system does not able to read the XML file, which we are providing in this text, in this text, and we want to transfer towards uh, the another language, we need to use the, this language to transfer it. We are not going to, to discuss the XSLT, but for normal, if you, any, any of the person who want to learn the XSL uh, or XSLT, there is a W3 school, which is really a great school for developing all these areas. So this is how to transform the data or how to transform XML output in XSLT. Any question? Okay, so I'll just go back to a couple of slides. We have discussed the integration system security in the last class. Uh, where we have created a one integration user and we assigned a, uh, that user with the integration uh, 
a security group with the integration user and then integration user with the integration system. And it's mentioned here, the steps and all the details. And then we have a document transformation where we are transforming the data from Workday to another system. So we are having our transformation data and we are transforming it from Workday uh, XML output to the text uh, output. This is called transformation. Transformation is using XPath and expressions, uh, which is really like, uh, this is not uh, a proper language. It's a more easy, if a person is willing to learn that, it's, it's really simple. Uh, even though it, it seems like difficult, but it's, it has the same schema. And this schema will be open or this, this information can be open in uh, CSV file too, in Excel file. Uh, so all the XST, XSLT or all the data we, have, we can deliver or create it out of Workday. And we can use uh, any of the tool like uh, Oxygen or uh, Uh, document transformation it's, it's really simple. We have to find the document transformation as a uh, integration. Uh, uh, we, we, need, we need to use it as a uh, system or as a template as a document transformation. And this document transformation is further configured to use the integration system attachment. And this system attachment allow us to upload our transformation out of Workday. It's not necessary like we have a Workday uh, or anything is in Workday. Let's take an example of one more integration. Uh, integration attachment, and we do not want to use this generic worker pipe output type file. We can go and we can create integration system attachment and it will allow us to add an, anything from the laptop, from your system. So this select file will allow you to, to select anything. And this XML file, whichever you create, you can attach it here. But for now, we just use a, one of the existing uh, information so that it will be uh, easier and to, to finish it much more faster. So what it will do, it will get the anything information, like if, if you see a bird eye view, like the Workday connector will provide the information as an XML output to this document transformation, which we have configured in the business process. And this document transformation has an XSLT and it transformed the data as per output and uh, the SFTP might be the output. The only thing is we do not have a SFTP location configured with the GMS tenant, it is limited. So we just tried with the one of the dummy SFTP output. And it's all done with the business process. Okay, Asif, if we have uh, any uh, any kind of errors in that XSLT, so how can we troubleshoot that? Excellent question. If you have this XSLT, assuming, and we have the output file, let me open the one output file, save it on the screen. I am using the uh, Notepad plus plus, right? So, so I just do the pretty line breaks first. 
So uh, now I have an XML output and I have a transformation, right? So what I will do, I will not upload anything in Workday before I do that testing. I'll just use this XSL transformation. And I use the XSLT, which is a generic output. And I will click on transform. And this allow me to bring with the data with any information. And if it does not work, Another one is online testers or transformations. So you put your XML code here, you put your accessibility here, and it will show your result immediately. There are a lot okay. of accessibility tools like the tools available in the market and this is free oh great yeah but if you are working any company uh, who are having a paid software then they're probably using uh, oxygen or altova those are the really great XLT tools i'll just mention the, the name here altova and oxygen these are not free versions these are the paid versions so these are the accessible to tools which are available and normally uh, those companies who are having the software uh, licenses or the, those who are working on integrations, they probably have one of them in their system. If not, then you, uh, they can buy it for you uh, as a you, per you personal license or, or the business license. Generally, the integration is there, like the integration has done and everything is there. Uh, but like sometimes we need to have some notifications, like we want to get notified by, our, by ourselves if the integration is failed, successful or whatever that case is. We want us to be uh, informed automatically, like we do not want to go into the system and see the data again and again. So in that case, there is an integration system and the configuration integration notifications task. When I click here, it allow me to create a notifications for this integration and it can trigger on launch and it can trigger on any status. Either it is completed or completed with error. For example, in general, in 70-80% cases, we do not need to, to see the completed integrations. We just want to see the errors integrations or we want to see the failed integrations, right? So we can uh, create this two tags. So whenever the integration is failed or added out, it will send a recipient, like for example, Logan McNeil, if she's the only one, or generally it should be a group, like the integration admin. To receive that notifications or if not someone else from the organization who, who does not have an organization perspective but he or she can get the, the output file and then we can only send us like the integration If you look at the screen, there is a recipients list. We can add a recipient as like uh, like employee or some specific uh, persons. The, the the integration who has scheduled by by person either he can receive this list or the, the integration admins uh, who are actually the admins of the. Uh, integrations they can receive this list or if they, uh, these are not enough 
there will be a one person who is out of your organization he can also receive it by through email or even if a person in the email uh, group uh, some specific group we can send it to that uh, that email address even in the organization and along with this we can create a subject using the the basic like a text uh, or the external field external field will pick normally the data from the integration like the integration event for example integration system name or integration event statuses so this will bring the data from uh, from, uh, from the workday state current integration status and if it is failed or it will complete it with error it will send a notification to our email or email in address from where we can see and then we can go into the workday and see what to do it's not necessary that we will do it uh, daily basis it will only allow or it should be done when when it's failed or it's errored out so this task or this notification is really important in the case of uh, employee or in case of uh, uh, operations where we are monitoring the critical information, critical emails, uh, uh, critical uh, integration. And it's not about the critical all only. It's normally we, we need to trigger uh, or we need to monitor all the integrations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, this is a great way to monitor the integrations, the notifications for the failed ones. So, yeah, thanks if, for breaking that down. But go ahead, Asif, if there's anything else. The document transformation or the, the transformation step is, is not uh, limited to this training, it's a, uh, it's a like uh, slightly more uh, in depth knowledge or it's uh, like the the integration in itself is it's a uh, it's a quite separate subject. Uh, we are just setting the foundation and the basics of the core connectors and uh, integrations in, the, in this class. So this is like the end of the core connector and the integrations uh, class. Okay.